Okay, the top of the page. As um, we looked at in the warm-up, okay, when we take a look at the sine of an angle and the cosine of the complement, we end up with the same decimal or the same fraction or the same ratio to describe those. So the sine of an acute angle is the same value as the cosine of its complement. So that means, so in our triangle, our two acute angles are A and B. So that means the measure of angle A plus B to be complements have to add up to 90 degrees. So the sine of A is what, Dante? A over C. So since A and B are complements, the cosine of B should also be the same. So cosine of B adjacent over hypotenuse is A over C as well. What is the sine of B? Alyssa? B over C. Opposite over hypotenuse, B over C. And then the cosine of A looking at the side adjacent is also B over C. They should be the same, okay, as we're comparing. So if you had to explain, once again, on a, a common core assessment or assessment for me, whether it be quiz or a test, they are the same because the ratio is comparing the same two sides. So in number one through three, so in the first one, it says you have triangle ABC and angle C is the right angle. In just stating that alone, that means angle A and angle B, because it's always sine or cosine of an angle, must be complementary. Because if one angle of a triangle is 90, the other two must be, um, have a sum of 90 as well to add to a total of 180 degrees. So these two angles are complementary. So if the sine of A is 8 over 17, the cosine of B is also 8 over 17. It's the same. The next one looks a little bit different. So it says the sine of a 30 degree angle is equal to the cosine of what degree? Keegan? 60. Because if the cosine, so this tells you, you have any, an equal sign, if the sine of an angle is equal to the cosine of another angle, that must mean the angles are complementary. So if you wanted to set something up, you could say x plus 30 is 90 to demonstrate conceptually that the angles must be complementary, and x is 60 degrees. The last one, before we start finding the measure of a missing sign, find the value of theta that makes that expression true. So our angle measures are theta and theta plus 20. To find the value of theta, we would take the sum and set it equal to 90 degrees. The angles must be complementary. So theta plus theta plus 20 equals 90. Subtract the 20, you get 70. Combine theta, there are two thetas. Divide by 2, and theta is 35 degrees. So if you wanted to check, take a moment on your calculator. So pause the video, take a moment to check. Type those in your calculator to see if you do get the same decimal. Now we're going to use the trigonometric ratio to find a missing side. So in each of these questions, you're going to be given one acute angle, one side. So given one angle and one side, you can find a missing side. And then if you wanted to, you could do trig to find the third side or do Pythagorean theorem to find the third side. So before we answer number one, okay, once you identify, so step number one, look at your picture. This is already set up for you. This is actually step two. But let's go back and draw the triangle that would actually go with this equation. So if the cosine of 35 is 12 over x, Cosine, let's put 35 here. Cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. So adjacent 12 hypotenuse x. That would be the picture that goes with that ratio. Okay? Now, since we're solving, we're not just writing the ratio anymore. When you use, if you write the whole thing, sine of an angle equals opposite over hypotenuse. Cosine of an angle equals adjacent over hypotenuse. You now have an equation. And you can use that equation to solve for x. So the equation here is cosine of 35 degrees equals 12 over x. How would we solve for x? There's a couple of different methods we could use. You could put it 
over 1 so that you could do what? Pro set up a proportion, cross multiply, or you can do the opposite of dividing by x, which would be to multiply by x. And when you do that, it simply moves x to the other side of the equation, so you still need to isolate. So you have two operations to isolate, which is to multiply and then divide by the cosine of 35 degrees. So divide equals 12 divided by cosine of 35. Doing that on the calculator, these cancel, and x is approximately, we're rounding to the nearest whole number. So x is approximately 15. No unit given, so we can finish with just the 15. Number 5, find the value of x to the nearest tenth. So looking at the angle, you first have to identify, are you using sine, cosine, or tangent? So looking at the angle measure that's given, we have the side opposite and we have the hypotenuse. Which ratio uses opposite over hypotenuse, Lucas? The sine. So sine of 42 degrees equals x over 12. Unlike the other side, so on the previous example, x was in the denominator. When x is in the denominator, you will always end up dividing the numerator by the cosine or the trig ratio on the other side. The best case scenario is when x is in the numerator because it's just a quick product to finish the question. The opposite of dividing by 12 is multiplying by 12. So on our calculators, so x is approximately rounding to the nearest tenth, 12 times the sine of 42. You should get 8.02956-7276, which to the nearest tenth would be what? 8.0. We have to write the point zero. Again, no unit given, so we're set with that one. Number six. A ship is sailing towards a small island. So here's the island, and then the ship gets two degrees off course. So it starts going this way. By how many miles will it miss the island? So we're looking for x, and we're going to round to the nearest hundredth. So given the angle of 2 degrees here, we're given the side opposite and the side adjacent, which is the, the O and the A goes with the T, which is tangent, so Katoa. So the tangent of 2 degrees equals x over 800. X is in the numerator, which is good, so all I have to do is multiply by 800. And X is approximately 800 times the tangent of 2 degrees. What do you get, Ryan? So 27, we're going to round to the nearest 100. So 27.94. So the ship will miss the island by about 27.94 miles. I'd like you to, before we go over the last one, I'm going to pause the recording and I'd like uh, those of you in class to discuss with a partner, someone nearby, how we're going to attack number seven. So come up with a plan. Find BC and CD, those two lengths, and we're going to round. They should tell us to round, okay? We'll round to the nearest tenth. So come up with a plan. How am I going to find the length of BC all the way down, and then the length of CD right here? So we start by finding the length of, well, let's start together. So first, let's find length BC. So if you want to, you can draw the triangle that goes with BC. So this whole side goes with the larger triangle. So if you were to draw that separately, you don't have to. But this is 50 degrees. Here's C, B, so we'll call that X and then A is here, and they have a, con a side that's constant overlapping in both 28. So we're going to use tangent. The tangent of 50 degrees equals X over 28. And X is in the numerator, which is good, so I just multiply both sides by 28. 
to get x is approximately, well, let's actually go back and call it bc. bc is approximately 28 times the tangent of 50. <coughs> what do we get for an answer? We're rounding to the nearest tenth, so that would be... Dante? 33.4. So 33.4 feet. Now let's find the length of BD and then we can subtract. So BD, if you want to draw the triangle, goes with the 32 degree angle. What's that? Yeah, did I say it incorrect? We're going to find BD to find CD. Yeah, I apologize if I said that incorrectly. So here's A, here's D, here's B. So given, again, that constant side that's in the overlapping, they share that side. So 28 feet. Um, let's call this Y so we can find DB. So tangent again, because we have opposite over adjacent. So now it's the tangent of 32 equals Y over 28. So multiply again by 28 and 32 times the tangent of 28 is, what do we get for an answer? Keegan, what'd you get? Dan, what'd you get? I see you typing. I had it switched. 28 times the tangent of 32. What do we get for an answer? Aaron? 17.5. So BD is approximately 17.5 feet. Now when I'm finding CD, should I take and subtract these two rounded answers? No, we should actually take the exact answer. So it's going to involve um, some longer expressions, but CD is going to be equal to, we take BC and subtract BD. And BC on the calculator is 28 times the tangent of 50 minus 28 times the tangent of 32. This is the exact answer. So 28 <laughs> times the tangent of 32. So CD will be approximately, using parentheses to group, 28 times the tangent of 50 minus 28 times the tangent of 32. We have an approximation of, can anyone give me the answer? Yeah, Dennis? 17.8, 28 tangent of 50 minus 28, it's not what I got. 28 times, I'm going to do it one more time on my calculator to make sure I didn't type it in incorrectly. 28 times the tangent of 50 minus 28 times the tangent of 32. That's why I wish the overhead was working. An answer, Lucy? Rounded. Yep, rounded. 15.9. So keep that on your calculator and I'll come over and take a look.